the battle for middle earth 2 or the rise of the witch king which game is better and what are the differences between these two games for someone who has not been involved in any of the mentioned games the main difference is obvious the extra faction which is called ingmar but there is so much more than that first things first the battle for middle earth 2 is the main and standalone game while the rise of the witch king is an expansion that requires the installation of battle for middle earth 2 to run Battle for Middle-earth 2 has its own good and evil campaign, while the Rise of the Witch King has only an evil campaign that introduces the faction Engma with all its units and heroes. Rise of the Witch King also adds new units and heroes for each faction that is existing in Battle for Middle-earth 2, as for example the Knights of Dol Amroth for the men, the hero Azog for the goblins, the Nolder warriors for the elves, the Zealots and King Bran for the dwarves, the Deathbringers for Isengard and the Black Riders for the Mordor faction. All the mentioned differences can be discovered by playing both the games for a couple of hours. But there are way more differences around the balance of each game. As EA Games abandoned all BFME games back in 2010, the development, the servers and everything else got shut down as well. The fans, however, started working on new patches for each game. The last official patches were the patch 1.06 for BFME 2 and the patch 2.01 for Rise of the Witch King. However, after more than 10 years, a a lot of stuff got changed for both the games. BFME 2 has the patch 1.09 version 2 and the Rise of the Witch King has the patch 2.02 as their main patch which is being played by the majority of the current online players via Game Ranger. And each patch is completely different from each other. Rise of the Witch King is following a simpler path about leadership, buffs and spells. You cannot have more than one buff and one leadership active at the same time, while spells can always stack with each other. Understanding how the buff system works is essential for the multiplayer experience. The buff and leadership system for BFME 2 patch 1.09 version 2 is a little bit more complex. While there is only one leadership in Rise of the Witch King, there are more than five in Battle for Middle-earth 2 and every unique leadership is able to stack with each other. The idea behind this move is to reward the players who are investing more resources for more expensive heroes. That's why Aragorn, a more expensive hero, has more impact than a Theorin, who is way cheaper. In Rise of the Witch King, however, every hero that offers leadership has exactly the same value. Another difference is about the experience level of the units and heroes. Similar to Battle for Middle-earth 1, you can level up all your units to level 10. And levels are very important as they are not only increasing the damage and armor, but also the movement speed for some certain units. In Rise of the Witch King, you can only level up to level 5. Exception to this rule are your heroes and the mini heroes. Mini heroes are the units that can't be recruited endlessly. For example, the Black Rider of the Mordor faction, which is limited to only one battalion at the same time and can only be recruited from the Siege Works level 3. The Battle for Middle-earth 2 patch 1.9 version 2 was also able to add brand new HD textures, new models and also amazing animations to the game. I will guide the strength of men. Rise of the Witch King patch 2.02 was aiming for more vanilla and nostalgic look by not changing the textures at least not too much. In Rise of the Witch King, every resource building has the same amount of HP. May it be a furnace, slaughterhouse, farm or a malone tree. In Battle for Middle-earth 2, every resource building has different amount of HP. While a tunnel with 1000 HP can be easily destroyed, a mineshaft with 2700 HP can take more time to go down. Also important to mention is that almost every mod is based on the Rise of the Witch King expansion and some of them also require the installation of the patch 2.02. But which game is better? If you are more into those crazy new animations, textures and details BFME 2 patch 1.9 was able to implement or the more complex gameplay with more room for heroes then give Battle for Middle-earth 2 a go. If you are looking for more simplistic gameplay that you can understand in less time with more units, more heroes and even more factions with the nostalgic design that was kept in the patch 2.02 then give Rise of the Witch King a go. And if you are already a BFME 2 or Rise of the Witch King player, which game do you prefer more and why? And if you haven't played either game for now, which one would you start playing first? Please let me know in the comment section down below. Thank you so much for watching and if you want to see more BFME content, consider subscribing to the channel and also leave a like to this video. See you hopefully all in the next video. Peace out.